Well, I guess I've put this off for long enough. Let's talk about Zack Snyder's Justice League. If you're watching this video, I'm sure you know this already, but Zack Snyder was the writer and director of the movie Justice League, but the version we got in theaters was not entirely what he intended. He left the project rather suddenly during post-production, for totally understandable reasons after the untimely death of his daughter, and Joss Whedon was brought in to finish it, and the end result was a bit of a mess. But after a very long and loud and angry fanboy campaign, Warner Brothers decided to throw another $70 million at Zack Snyder to bring him back and have him finish his movie. And thus, we now have Zack Snyder's Justice League released directly to HBO Max. I have watched the entirety of Zack Snyder's Justice League, all four hours of it. Not the longest movie I have sat through, mind you. Return of the King Extended Edition beats it by about 10 minutes. Although, I think those 10 minutes are just the credits. And honestly, it was okay. I have no desire to sit through all four hours of that again, but I don't regret doing so. It's certainly not the best superhero movie ever, as it is not Into the Spider-Verse, nor is it the worst superhero movie ever, as it is not Catwoman. In fact, I'm not really sure if this necessarily qualifies as a movie per se. Really, it's an unfinished, open matte assembly cut with completed visual effects. And that makes it a little difficult to compare to the original theatrical cut, because that was at least a movie, and not an unfinished open matte assembly cut with completed visual effects. And I did go back and re-watch the theatrical cut for the first time since its release, in addition to watching all four hours of Zack Snyder's version, so that's six hours of movies that I watched for this one freaking vlog. The things I do for this channel. I can say, after comparing the two, that the Snyder Cut at least feels consistent. The entire thing does look and feel like one man's creative vision. The theatrical cut does not. That looks like it was thrown together at great expense and at the last minute. Because it was. And it is very clear to me, after watching both versions back to back, that there was a studio mandate to get this sumbitch down to two hours for the theatrical release by any means necessary. And they did. Somehow. But they had to chop the hell out of some of those scenes to do it. I mean, I remember thinking it looked a bit rushed before, but especially after watching the four-hour cut, it's even more obvious. It also seems to me that despite the fact that Whedon did a lot of reshoots, which were very noticeable, especially the scenes where he took the background from the scene they shot previously with Snyder and just green-screened the actor into it, and ugh, God, it looked awful, but... It's really clear that his changes to the story were pretty minimal. The only real notable differences were, apart from one single name drop, all references to Darkseid and other residents of Apocalypse were removed. We didn't see Darkseid or Desaad, we didn't get that Granny Goodness cameo. And that big ancient battle with the Alliance of Men and Elves, I mean, uh, Atlanteans and Amazons, yes, that's what it was and bears no resemblance to that other movie. Whedon basically just replaced Darkseid with Steppenwolf, and boy did the movie suffer for that because Steppenwolf was kind of a nothing bad guy. The other thing he changed is there was a character that gets killed off in the Snyder version that survived in Whedon's cut, but I will say at least... In the Snyder version, the character actually has, I think, a meaningful death, unlike Jimmy Olsen's. And he made a few minor changes to the battle at the end with Steppenwolf. There's this thing that he did where Batman uses some kind of siren that the Parademons really don't like to lead them away from the battle. I don't know why that was necessary, because he had just attacked their dome and blown it up, so they would have chased him anyway, but oh well. Also, unlike the Snyder version, where the town near that nuclear reactor is completely abandoned, Whedon's version has people living there, which is not entirely unrealistic. I mean, this is pretty obviously a Chernobyl analog. And there are a handful of people living in the Chernobyl restricted zone today. It's mostly older people who lived there before the incident and just moved back there because where else were they going to go? And old age is going to kill them long before the radiation ever does. But I don't think they're living like right next to the reactor like they were in Whedon's version, so it, it, it was a bit weird. But anyway, because his changes to the story were pretty minimal, 
it makes a lot of his reshoots just look pointless, because most of the Snyder footage was totally serviceable. The scene at the Kent farmhouse with Superman and Lois right after his resurrection, for example, it looks like Whedon almost completely reshot that thing, and I don't know why, Snyder's version was fine. Even some of the quips he added were not all that great in hindsight, and I was even more surprised to find out some of the quips from the theatrical cut were Snyder's. The scene on the rooftop of the Gotham PD where all the other superheroes just, phew, they're gone, and Barry's like, wow, they really do just vanish like that, don't they? Huh, that's rude. I assumed that was Whedon, apparently I was wrong. So, after watching both versions of this movie and pouring over my very, very, very long list of notes, which is close to a small book, uh, <laughs> I wish I was joking. Yeah, pretty much the opposite of what I did for Tenet. I've kind of broken this down to where I think this went wrong, some differences that weren't really better or worse, they were just there, and what went right. So... Let's start with the wrong so we end on a high note. Uh, first of all, this did not need to be four hours. The theatrical cut felt rushed. This is exactly the opposite of that. It is long and slow and drags ass. When the caption appeared on the screen for part three, I figured I was probably close to halfway done, and then I look at my watch and realize, it's only been about an hour. Oh my god, how long is this thing? And of course, one movie that comes to mind is The Irishman. You know how The Irishman had that really unnecessarily long driving scene? There's a few things like that in the Snyder Cut. It really looks to me like they took every single bit of footage that Snyder shot down to the frame, and they put it in this movie, and or this unfinished assembly cut shot in open mat with visual effects, you know. Uh, but yeah, it's... It definitely does not all need to be here. And not only did they include every single bit of footage that Snyder shot originally, they went back and shot more footage, like that big dream sequence at the end of the movie, where Jared Leto's Joker shows up. A lot of this additional footage is just setting up sequels that will never happen, so... Why? Now, I understand that there are a lot of people out there who thought this interaction between Batman and the Joker was the best ever. You are entitled to your opinion. Here is my opinion. The best interaction between Batman and the Joker should not include Joker talking about giving Batman a reach around, nor should it involve Batman saying, I will fucking kill you, nor should it involve Jared Leto in any way, shape, or form. And besides, how can it possibly be the best interaction between Batman and the Joker when this exists? Wayne Tech promised an electric car by this year. I put a deposit down. Where's my goddamn electric car, Bruce? I rest my case. And there are a few other scenes that easily could have been trimmed or cut out entirely. That bit where all the villagers are singing to Aquaman as he swims out to sea. What even the hell was that? I heard a lot of stories about how the studio was very apprehensive about this movie and was constantly fighting with Snyder during production. Now I understand why. I can't really blame them. All that said, after watching all four goddamn hours of this thing, I am convinced there is a good movie in here somewhere. And that good movie's runtime is probably around the three hour mark. The next problem, the aspect ratio. Many people who are much more knowledgeable about this sort of thing than I am have already pointed out why Zack Snyder's explanation for using the IMAX aspect ratio makes no sense whatsoever. Please stop acting like it does. There is no reason to release a movie directly to home viewers in the 4 to 3 aspect ratio in the year of our Lord 2021 unless you are going for some kind of old-timey aesthetic, which Snyder is clearly not. He's just doing it because he doesn't understand how the IMAX aspect ratio works. And of course, there is the standard Zack Snyder color palette. I will never understand that man's aversion to color. If there was anything Whedon improved in his cut, it was that. Actual, honest to God, color. And it's not just the color grading, it's the costumes as well. Superman's costume in the Snyder cut is all black. All black, and it looks like shit. Also, regarding the fact that this unfinished assembly cut has completed visual effects, 
boy, did some of those effects look pointless. I mean, the CGI sesame seed flying through the air in slow motion gets... Not only was that pointless, but it looked like ass. There's also a scene that takes place during a football game, and it's snowing during that game. The snow is all computer-generated. Why is it there? Does the snow add anything to the scene? No. Now, if Snyder was just doing stuff like that as a way of wasting the studio's money, as a way to get back at them... Honestly, there's a small part of me that respects that, but still, it was dumb. And some of the visual effects really do not look good. Like, Cyborg's head does not always look like it's really attached to his body. It's not as bad as Cat's. I will give it that. Cat's was worse. Still does not look very good. There's also a shot that features all of the members of the Justice League, and they are supposed to be in the same room. They clearly were not all filmed in the same room, because despite standing right next to each other, they are all somehow lit differently. Now, if they had to film them all separately because of COVID protocols, that's completely understandable, but at least fix the lighting. Oh, and speaking of that sesame seed, the scene where the Flash is introduced... Did not like it. I don't know how Snyder pulled this off, but he somehow managed to take a super speed scene and make it feel painfully slow. If you looked at the time in a bottle scene from Days of Future Past and you wondered, what would this look like if it was done wrong? This is what it would look like. And then we have all of the scenes involving Lois Lane and Martha, why did you say that name, Kent, leading up to Superman's resurrection. Every once in a while, as this very, very long movie rolls along, they just keep popping up every once in a while to remind you that they are still there. They don't actually do anything, but they're there. I mean, this is basically what I had in my notes for these two characters. Part 1. Martha is sad. Also, Lois is sad. Part 2. No Lois or Martha in Part 2. Part 3. Lois is still sad. Part 4. Lois and Martha are still sad. Also, there is a pointless cameo, which we'll get to later. Part 5. Lois is, you guessed it, still sad. Part 6. Lois is no longer sad. But she's not exactly happy either, because no one ever really looks happy in a Zack Snyder film. This is yet another reason why this movie did not need to be four hours long. They easily could have cut this all down, and in fact, in the theatrical cuts, they did. That was one change they made for the better, apart from the thirsty joke. That's no. Whedon is bad, and he should feel bad. For many reasons, not just that. Next on my list, oh yes, Steppenwolf's armor. You know, it's not boring. I will give it that. The theatrical cut, he looked boring as hell. He does not look boring here. He just looks very, very silly. He is now covered head to toe in a bunch of wavy, pointy metal bits. And even his loincloth has been turned into a loincloth made of those floaty, pointy, rotating metal bits, which just seems like a really bad and unsafe idea. On both ends, really. Darkseid is also in this movie, actually, instead of just being name-dropped once. That's not the problem. The problem is, in addition to bringing him into this movie, they also introduce the concept of the anti-life equation. Why? We already have the plot of them searching for the mother boxes so they can take over the world. We don't need to add yet another device that they can use to take over the world. We just need one. The anti-life equation should have been saved for another movie. Which won't happen now, but still, it just... it, it was unnecessary. You can maybe use that at the end of the movie to tease the next movie, which now will no longer happen, but putting it right smack in the middle just does not work. Next on my list is the Superman Jesus imagery. Snyder is still on that bullshit. Zack, please stop. And then, of course, we have that pointless cameo I alluded to earlier, and I'm not even sure if I want to mention who it is, because it is kind of, well... No, it's not really a spoiler. It has no bearing on the plot. It's Martian Manhunter. At some point, he disguises himself as Martha Kent to go talk to Lois, and I have no idea why, because that scene easily could have just been the real Martha talking to Lois, and it would have accomplished the exact same thing. So, yeah, that was dumb. And he shows up in a post credit scene, which apparently was not part of Snyder's original plan. That scene was supposed to involve the 
John Stewart Green Lantern, but the studio said, no, we have other plans for the Green Lantern, so Martian Manhunter was the compromise. A better compromise would be not adding yet another character to this already bloated roster. Okay, now we got all of my complaints out of the way, and all the Snyder fanboys have tuned out, so for those of you who are still here, a few more changes in this movie that were not necessarily good or bad. This movie's introduction has been completely changed, and now it recaps the death of Superman, and it's basically just his long, drawn-out death scream slowly echoing across the entire friggin' planet. And honestly, I do find it rather appropriate, considering how the Snyder Cut came to be, that it begins with a prolonged scream of agony. There's a lot more blood, mostly from the parademons, but it was noticeable. We got a few F-bombs this time around, which, like the VFX, feel like they were just thrown in for the sake of it, although I wasn't really bothered by it. Except the one from Batman at the end. That, no. They also, I think, completely redid the soundtrack. Uh, goodbye White Stripes, hello Nick Cave. And in the end credits, Come Together has been replaced by Hallelujah, because I guess Snyder really likes that song. And they also went to the trouble of replacing Danny Elfman's score with a new score by Junkie XL. This does mean we no longer have Elfman's Batman theme, but Junkie's version was pretty clearly inspired by Elfman's theme, which makes me wonder why they didn't just use Elfman's theme. Seventy million dollars they threw at the Snyder Cut, and they couldn't use any of that to use the Elfman Batman theme? We did, however, get more Wonder Woman theme, which I do appreciate. And now let's look at what went right. Like I said earlier, this feels so much more consistent throughout, thematically and tonally. Because they were not desperately trying to get this thing crammed down to two hours, the editing does not look janky as hell. And because none of the Whedon reshoots were used, no CGI Superman face. I... God, I remembered it was bad. But I was still surprised going back to it after all these years, just how bad it was. And it's the first shot in the theatrical cut, too. God, they can't have looked at that and thought that was good. When Superman finally shows up for the big fight at the end, he has a really good line. I dug that. The action sequences are, for the most part, pretty well done. In the final battle, I did like that Flash played a much bigger role this time around. He wasn't just reduced to running all of the civilians away from the fight. And the fight between Superman and the other League members was also handled better in this version, though I do appreciate that they kept the head turn, because that's a cool moment. Also, Steppenwolf. Yes, I know I just got done trashing his very silly costume, but he is much better in this version because he actually feels like a character. In the theatrical cut, he was pretty much just a cardboard cutout of a villain who wanted to take over the world because it's a comic book movie and that's what the bad guy does. He actually has an honest-to-God, credible motivation for doing this. He betrayed Darkseid once upon a time and paid for it, and now he is seeking redemption. Very simple explanation, but it works! And probably the biggest and best and most important change in this version. So much more cyborg. Ray Fisher totally got shafted by the theatrical cuts. So much of his backstory was removed, and I really don't know why, apart from the demand that it get down to two hours. Victor's character is so much more fleshed out here, and we actually get to see his backstory instead of just hear him briefly talk about it. What a novel idea! There's a neat little bit where we see him use his super hacking powers to dump $100,000 into the bank account of a struggling single mother, which I'm sure she greatly appreciated. I'm not sure if she would have liked the fact that Cyborg was basically cyber-stalking her for God only knows how long in order to verify that she really is poor enough to deserve the money, but I guess at least she can feed her kids now. Suffice to say, the theatrical cut did Cyborg dirty, and it is so good to see his story properly restored here. So, I think I've ranted long enough here. Let me sum up. It is... I don't think necessarily a good or bad movie, because again, I'm not sure it really qualifies as a movie, but I did like it better than the theatrical cut. It is an overall improvement, especially after watching them back to back. It is very obvious how much more of an improvement it is. It's still not quite where it needs to be, but at this point, it's the best version of the movie we're going to get. I do not think it's worth subscribing to HBO Max just for this movie, but if you already have HBO Max, sure, give it a watch. Probably won't want to watch the entire thing in one sitting, but it's easy enough to split into two or three. 
That is all I have to say about Zack Snyder's Justice League. Until next time, take care.